The profile of the signing is what we would like. You know, he's got League One experience. I know he played a lot of non-league football as well, but a lot of league players have got that foundation of non-league football you know, under their belt as well. So he's definitely the sort of profile we want. It's the position we wanted as well. A lot of your guests on the show, and I've been harping on for the past 12 months, we've been just sticking with the same failed midfield um, that you know needs something added. I think the three players we have there already, uh, you know, in Mary, Hendry and Walker, they're solid players. You've got Jennings who can add to the mix, but everyone has felt we need that extra something, that extra ingredient in midfield. Uh, and Finley looks like a, a ball winner, um, which is something we all felt like we lost when Leo Connor stopped playing there. Um, he's a leader, which obviously you know you can never have too many leaders. Uh, and I like also he's he's got experience of a dogfight in league in, in League Two. He was part of that Bristol Rovers team that went on a crazy ch- uh, surge up the league, and ended up getting promotion against all odds on the last day with their seven 0 victory or whatever it was on the last day. So he, you know he himself will have experience of knowing that it's never over. Because it's something that I preach all the time, year in year out. It doesn't matter how far off you are, you just need a good run. And he's a player who proved that. Um, but yeah, the right profile, the right position, the right type of player. Uh, I'm very excited about it. It's only one signing, and obviously we want more. But um, early in June, and we've got our first very impressive sign. So I'm happy. Uh, hopefully more to come. It feels like a real statement of intent to me. Um, there may be factors behind him wanting to move back to Merseyside because he is a Northwest lad who. Um, started his career actually with the likes of Southport and Warrington before moving on to the New Saints. And this is where I think his profile takes a real interesting turn. He won four Welsh Premier League titles with the New Saints. He won a couple of cups with them as well. He then went to Fylde and won the National League North with them. So he played against Tranmere in the National League in the 2017-18 season. He then moves on to Bristol Rovers. And as you, uh, sorry, he goes to Accrington first, plays against Tranmere in his time at Accrington, has a spell at Fleetwood and then moves on to Bristol Rovers. And as you say, continues his winning habit there because he helps them win promotion back to League One with that remarkable turn of events at the end of the season in 2021-2022. He is someone who, of the last six seasons, five of them have been spent playing in League One, and he's played at least 27 league games in each of those campaigns. Um, In all of them, bar one, he's played 30-plus league games. 438 appearances over the course of his career, 55 goals. But intriguingly for me, over three years with Bristol Rovers, 121 appearances. This is a guy who... He consistently plays football matches, and um, I think you can safely say about some of Tramis' current midfielders, that's not always the case. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Walker is obviously the one that everyone worries about all the time. And and this now, what what I like about this particular sign, and you, you're right, it's a statement of intent because I like that this is a player who is actually going to put pressure on those starting midfielders. He's going to come here to start games. You know, he's not going to come from Bristol Rovers playing 121 games for them. To come to us to sit on the bench and accept his second fiddle to to uh, to Walker or to Henry or to many, you know, he's not going to be happy with that. He's going to want to be pushing them for for the starting spot. Whether this means, that, I mean, we may tinker with formations that gets all three of them in there. I, I, I don't know, but the, the real point is, it's not a sign that just makes up the numbers like um, McAleer. He was just a number. Um, you know, we were all excited when we signed him, but he was never a, a viable option to to pressure the starting midfielders. So, no, this is a really good sign. And, uh, yeah, he's played a lot of games for Bristol Rovers. They're, they're no mugs, Bristol Rovers. They're, they're a solid team. They always have been. You don't play that many games for them and their fan, fans um, if, you, if you're if below standard or if you don't give give everything. You know, I, I see them as a similar sort of fan base to ourselves. They're quite hard to please. And um, they, when it was announced that he was leaving them a, few, a month or so back, they were sort of wishing him well and thanking him for all of his service. So, he's clearly set a high standard at a... A level that's higher than where we're at so it's a massive sign he has said in his interview coming sort of home if you like was a big part of it you know he knows Tramir he's he's a he's a Merseyside lad he's from Liverpool um I think I've looked at his Twitter and he does refer to the scouts factor you know he's got a lot of scouts mates when he played at Bristol Rovers but that doesn't bother me you know that's that's fine if he wants to come and be close to his family well you know I, I've made career choices that have involved moving closer to my family so I totally get that. It doesn't mean that he's not here for footballing reasons as well. And he'll come. He wants to work with Nigel Atkins. And and hopefully we can pepper that with some extra good signings. 
sort of you know, sort of, you know, three or four other very solid signings, along with what I feel is a good skeleton of a team already, then um, he he he'll be part of a successful team hopefully, and then he's not just making up the numbers in a League Two team; he's actually playing a big part in what hopefully will be a promotion pushing team.